the spirit said, brooding. His word was in my bones. Forget brooding. about acquisition. Acquisition Over is tertiary. The primary the goal brooding. of lifting. Use it quickly. Oh, fire! Let your mind be holy. God's fire. Listen, can I tell you the proof that you are not valuable or you have not developed your value is that your absence means nothing to those around you. When your absence means nothing to those around you, it means your presence is not contributing anything serious. Please listen carefully. I'm provoking you for a reason. You know how valuable you are by the reaction that happens with your absence. Jesus disappeared for three days and the disciples wanted, they were almost dying. They had to say, look, let's go back to fishing. And when Jesus came up, there are many of you, if in your workplace, you decide to take a break for two weeks, you will return back and they'll say, it looks like we've not seen your face. You say, well, I've not been around. You say, oh, no wonder. But absolutely nothing changed with your absence. That should not be so. You should be such a contributor, first to kingdom come and then to your environment, that the slightest manifestation of your absence will be felt so deeply. That is a sign that you are valuable. Hallelujah. The gift of a man may get room for him and brings him before great people. Listen. When God was preparing me for ministry, this was one of the things I learned especially from great fathers and veterans like Dr. Miles Monroe. Because at that time, many people had a lot of superstitious approach to ministry. They just believed that once your heart was sincere, without any development, any refinement, you just make sure your heart is pure towards God. Eventually, you will become great. It didn't make even spiritual sense to me. Because Jesus, even though he was the son of God, it took him 30 years of preparation. And the Bible did not hide his diligence. What will the son of God, the logos of God, be doing at the temple at age 12? For 18 solid years, ladies and gentlemen, Jesus was preparing for a ministry of three and a half years. John, the prophet, was in the wilderness. Even though a prophet from God, he did not spare his training. Can I tell you sincerely, please hear me ladies and gentlemen. There are many of you who have not been able to make full proof of your ministry. Your ministry, they are not just fivefold, but every expression of value that you were sent by God to bring to your world. Because you do not know that your reward depends on your gift. Most people say my reward depends on God. You are not lying, but you need to understand how his economy works. As sincere as you are as a CEO, as born again as you are, if someone comes to tell you I'm a member of Koinonia, please employ me. Let me be um, the person to handle all your finances. I'm honest. You will tell the person as well, eh? Write your prayer point because that is a prayer point and go and drop it at the miracle service but you will not employ the person why because even though the person has told you he's a christian you will need to be able to vet his proficiency and that without any biases or prejudices there are many people who downplay the place of value and sacrifice listen to me the reward system of the kingdom i repeat again is connected to value years ago this my precious people in the worship team they were itching so much to find expression they wanted to go for meetings any meeting at all and i stopped them i said you are not going anywhere you guys want aside from blessing the lord you want to be local champions who will be angry competing with one another and fighting and insulting those who go ahead of you that is the trajectory the sad trajectory of mediocres they usually will do very small and not rise then they become frustrated because everyone goes and leaves them they have to coin out a justification and the way they do that is by fighting everyone and everything ahead of them it ought not to be so I remember challenging them and I said sit down I love you people but the songs you are bringing the nations cannot bless the Lord with that kind of investment stay and build yourself 
today to God be the glory. You celebrate what they are doing. You see. And even today, it's not like I'm done with them. Praise God. Remember, I said 1,000 cubits. After they measure it, you rest. Then another tape comes again. My dear violinist, when he, he sent me a text to appreciate me, and I said, young man, you are doing well. May God bless you. I said, but go and rehearse. There's so much you need to learn. Don't think because people you played violin, go and rehearse. I know the sound of excellence and quality. Go and rehearse. Build yourself again. Can I tell you, when people raise a very high bar for you, it's because they want the, whole, the nations to celebrate God in your life. This mediocre mentality we have that has endorsed mediocrity, you find out that people never rise. For doing nothing, we keep clapping for ourselves. As a man of God, you preach a sermon that even you, you know that's not what God told you. You know that the Holy Spirit cannot breathe upon such a dull sermon, spiritually and intellectually dull. Okay, forgive yourself and go back and walk. You just assume because somebody who is your friend forever just came and said, what a brilliant sermon. And you actually believe that lie. Now, it's not about competition, but you need to charge yourself. I listen to all my teachings for two reasons. One, to be blessed by it, but number two, to make sure I never remain at that level. It is a rule and a covenant without excuse. Listen, until you give your pursuit in life and destiny a business approach, a business approach meaning you have to be strict with yourself don't mark yourself, write an exam and organize speech and prize for yourself for doing nothing. There are nations, there are territories. Now God is sending us to the United Kingdom. You can imagine the hunger, tens of thousands of people coming and there comes an ill-prepared preacher not knowing what he's doing. You stand and you don't know what to say. Then you tell them God is going to move, nothing happens. You tell them God will heal, nothing happens. You quote all kinds of wrong scriptures. No. No. Can I tell you, I have taught you that there are many closed doors in our lives that are a sign of God's mercy. Because if that door had opened with our level of ill preparedness, it would take a long time to get those doors to open again. So God closes those doors as a sign of his mercy and challenges you to prepare. Joseph, make sure you are ready for Pharaoh before you ask the wine presser to make him remember you. Because when you stand before Pharaoh, it is a dream to interpret. If Joseph had messed up, he will go back to the prison and remain there forever. I made up my mind that I was not only going to be a spiritual preacher but that my communications will come with a blend of spirituality and intelligence for God's sake that when you are teaching people they must find a point of applicability there must be intelligence no matter the mysticism and how a mysterious what you are communicating is learning from Jesus you must be able to break down kingdom mysteries in a way and to a context that people can understand and find a point of applicability in their lives. Are we together? What do you do with the gift of God in your life? Number one, you discover it. I'm showing you the dynamics now because knowing, maybe you write this first, knowing you are gifted is not enough. You must pay the price to refine and develop that gift knowing you are gifted ladies and gentlemen knowing you have skill knowing you are called knowing you are a businessman knowing you are a prophet knowing you are an apostle is not enough paying the price to develop it that is where your honor is and that is where your reward lies the reward is not in the discovery the reward is in the refinement and the deployment let me take it again the reward is not in the discovery 
you are not rewarded for discovering yourself you are not rewarded for discovering your gift you are not rewarded for discovering you are called into ministry you must be able to develop and refine let's talk about development the first thing you do with your gift is to discover the second is development spare me a few minutes as i charge your hearts look up please you want to develop your gift you must be prepared to go through the furnace of affliction the furnace of affliction is not a bad word you know once we hear affliction many people just run away and say i reject it can i tell you sacrifice is the language of champions nobody becomes great at their terms let me use ministry for instance i do not want to speak like i'm bragging but heaven knows and i can tell you uneasy lies the head that wears the crown make no mistake about the glory of god that is revealed in the life of people today whether it's accessing the anointing whether it's staying on course to find revelation whether it's understanding leadership are we together now knowledge is not a gift you buy the truth developing anything is difficult learn that from architecture you can destroy a building in one minute, literally without exaggeration. But it can take you as much as three, four, five years, depending on the kind of structure you're erecting. Building anything is hard. Building men, building stamina, growing in the anointing, building your faith, building your knowledge bank, both spiritually and intellectually. It takes time. This is where many people miss out on it because we have this superstitious idea that just because the Holy Ghost is in my life and I have scripture, automatically with no effort on my own part, I will rise mysteriously, especially because of forces in the kingdom that have not been taught properly. Chiefest among them is favor. I teach favor a lot and I can tell you I'm a living epistle of that mystery. But it does not have told you favor is merited. The idea that it's unmerited is what has deceived people into complacency and laxity. I know my God will do it. Be laughing at me today. Tomorrow you will bend your head in shame. As a prophetic confession, I agree. But with no effort on your own part to work with prophecy, you will be disappointed in multiple folds. I tell you. Are we together? I've seen many people who want to build great ministries, for instance, rather than submitting themselves to learning, to understand the ropes around excelling in ministry. All they are interested in is just a little impartation. Apostle just touched my head and I know everything will go back. I assure you it will be a risk for God to send thousands of people with that bankruptcy of knowledge you do not know what human beings can do when you are not trained to understand the psychology of people it's not only scripture you need to understand the, the kinds of problems that your organization will go through i'm not sure you'll be ready to handle that and so god will teach you he will guide you are we together now yes forget about acquisition acquisition is tertiary over the primary goal of lifting, use it quickly. Oh, fire! Let your mind be holy. God's fire.